one of these is gonna hold, and one of these is gonna drop me. Can you guess which one? If you guessed B, you're a winner. Okay, now let's watch that again, but in real time. Could you tell when the ice was gonna drop me? All right, let's watch this one more time, but from a distance, and I really want you to listen. What you just heard is known as a critical and coincidence frequency. A critical frequency occurs when the speed of a free bending wave in a panel is equal to the acoustic wave in the air. A coincidence occurs when the acoustic wave in the air is above the critical frequency of the panel, but is at an angle where an incidence can occur. Above critical frequency, there will always be an angle of incidence. Hence, a coincidence frequency. The ice bends and cracks underneath my weight, sending vibrations through the ice as well as into the air. And when these vibrations line up just right, they create a coincidence frequency. Now, not only does this sound really cool, like Star Wars laser beams, but we can actually use this sound. By analyzing the frequency, we can find out how thick the ice is, depending on the hertz. The higher the frequency, the thinner the ice. Now, let's re-examine the clip where I fell through and use the coincidence frequency to determine how thin the ice was. The frequency was jumping around between 1100 and 1200. And looking at this graph, we can tell that the ice had to be between 30 millimeters and 35 millimeters to create that frequency, or about 1.2 inches. Which I've discovered from doing rigorous scientific research is the bare minimum to hold a human being weighing around 165 pounds. Looking at this clip, most rational people would presume that this is too thin to be skating on but let's use the coincidence frequency to determine how thick it actually is. By the shore, the ice was reading a little over 800 hertz, which means the ice was around 40 to 45 millimeters, or 1.6 inches. But out in the middle, the ice was reading a little bit less than 700 hertz, which means the ice was a little bit over 50 millimeters thick, or nearly two inches out in the middle. That's 0.4 inches difference from the shore out into the middle of the lake. Now, 0.4 inches doesn't sound like very much, but... Ice strength grows exponentially for every centimeter that is added. And we know this from Gold's formula. By using Gold's formula, we can find the maximum load capacity of an ice sheet. We do this by squaring the ice thickness and then multiplying it by a load factor. The load factor can vary from 3.5 to 6, depending on the quality of the ice. 
And since this is clear black ice, we're going to use the highest load factor of 6. The ice by the shore has a maximum load capacity of 233 pounds, while the ice in the middle has a maximum load capacity of 357 pounds. This means that the difference of just one centimeter from the shore to the middle of the lake, the ice in the middle of the lake can hold 65% more weight than by the shore. So if you happen to be one of the lucky 1 in 10,000 people that has perfect pitch, you can figure out precisely how thick and strong the ice is just from the sound it makes. Now for the 9,999 rest of us, we'll just have to eyeball it. Oofka. But there is one major caveat to using the coincidence frequency to determine the thickness of the ice, and that is that you cannot hear this frequency when you are skating. You can hear it from other skaters, but because you are the source of the sound, you cannot hear it. So, there's another method I use to help determine how thick the ice is without actually cutting through or breaking the ice, and that is by looking at it. There are three stages of cracking that I use to determine how thin the ice is and whether or not it is safe to be skating on. The unsafest is when it is spider webbing. There are of course different levels of each stage and spider webbing can be drastic, which is you're about to fall through, bad, you're probably gonna fall through, or okay, you're still probably gonna fall through, but maybe not. Then there's singular or double cracking. This is usually around two inches. This is where the ice is cracking in like a little X form or a straight line underneath your feet. It is still very exciting, but I consider it to be much safer. I'm generally not too worried about falling through at this stage, but I always make sure to keep my spikies on me just in case. At the final stage, the ice isn't actually cracking beneath your feet, but makes big adjustment cracks that will ring across the ice. Fucking hell, man. makes these crazy twirl designs. It looks like it's like spinning almost. This is usually around three inches, which is what most people consider to be safe for skating. But below three inches is where I consider ice to be the most fun and exciting to be skating on. Not only does the ice make these beautiful sounds, but it also will bend. I'm sure if you've seen my videos before, you'll see me skating and the ice appears to be bending like a wave as I skate along. The reason ice does this is because you know what? Let me just show you. Look how clear that is. That's crazy. That is crystal clear. From understanding Gold's formula, looking at this block, that is nearly 10, 12 inches, this should be able to hold thousands of pounds. And I know this because there are also cars on this lake over there. So, it should be able to hold me, no problem. So why did that just happen? That is because Gold's formula only <laughs> We got a sponsor, baby! Woo! sponsored by Epic Demic Sound. If you're a content creator, I'm sure you know how difficult and obnoxious it can be to find the right music for a video. Look at this video. It got claimed six times. Epic Demic Sound takes that worry and hassle away. They have over 35,000 tracks and over 90,000 
sound effects. In fact, every single song you've heard in this video so far has been from Epidemic Sound. If you sign up in the next five days of this video going live, you'll get your first month free and then 75% off your next two months. And you can use their music during that trial and it will never be claimed ever. So it's perfect to sign up, try it out. So yeah, big old thank you to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video, as well as Allie for reaching out to me and helping me do all this. All right, back to ice. The thing about Gold's formula is that the moment you remove ice from the water, it completely falls apart. You see, ice only has the strength it has because it sits on top of water, and water is non-compressible. This is where ice's flexural strength comes into play. Because without the support of the water, the ice can flex but will shatter without being able to bounce back. Skating on ice between one and a half and two and a half inches is where you can best observe ice's flexural strength. Below 1.5 inches, you can see the ice hits its maximum flexural strength, where it goes from bending to cracking, and then eventually breaking. Now, observing ice's flexural strength as a skater can be really cool, but it is also extremely important for ice road truckers, because even when the ice is extremely thick, it still bends. And when you move along, you have a wave that follows you, and the faster you go, the more compressed the wave becomes in front of you. It can pile up the waves to a point where the ice can explode. Which is why if you're ever driving on a lake and you see a sign that says speed limit 10 miles an hour, even though it's a straight road and you think you can fly across no problem, I highly recommend following that speed limit because you don't want to see the ice in front of you explode and fall through. All right, well that should just about wrap everything up. That's everything I could think of related to ice. I hope you guys learned something, hope you enjoyed. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.